Let's take a closer look at the step sequence mode. This is where you're going to start sequencing your patterns. With pattern mode selected, press play and we begin looping around our pattern. You can add steps by pressing on the pads and remove them by pressing again. And you can see that everything matches the channel rack in FL Studio. Let's add some hi-hats. You can also add two steps at a time, and you can change the velocity of individual steps by holding and adjusting the parameters, which is great for things like ghost notes on claps. I can also change the volume of the whole clap channel by selecting the channel here and adjusting the volume up here. And you can see that the LED screen gives me feedback. If you want to loosen up your drum patterns, you're not locked into the grid. You can simply select a pad and use the grid select to shift, it off the grid. In this case I have the clap coming just before the beat. With fire you can also launch loops inside your patterns. I have a loop in the channel rack and I'm just going to add it to the pattern here and it will loop around along with the rest of the beat. We can also manipulate our loops in real time using fire. I've mapped some FL Studio stock effects to user bank 1 and I'm going to manipulate this with the encoder. This is great for live performance. Now let's add a bass line to our track by using note mode. I select the bass by pressing Alt and rotating the selection encoder until the channel bass is selected. Now I'm ready to record. Now I'm going to use drum mode to add some additional sounds to our loop in real time. This gives me access to the classic 16 pad layout with my samples loaded in the FPC. Finally, let's look at performance mode, which allows us to launch audio and pattern clips in real time. This is great for live remixing. We can launch additional patterns and clips. We can also utilize FL Studio's time stretching algorithm to speed up and slow down the track in real time. This is great for DJ, live performance and remixing.